हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द एपिसोड टू ऑफ ऑल यू वॉन्टेड टू नो अबाउट सो अगेन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टेन टॉपिक्स एंड विल स्टार्ट विद इट द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज जी बी यू फोर्टी थ्री सो दिस इज वेरी हॉट राइट नाउ एंड येस्टरडे ओनली अमेरिका ड्रॉप द नॉन न्यूक्लियर बॉम्ब ऑन अफगानिस्तान एंड दिस इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द बिगेस्ट लार्जेस्ट और मदर ऑफ ऑल बॉम्ब्स and uh, it is having a huge destructive power and uh, as we see in the figure there are various uh, bombs like the moab bomb the daisy cutter the tall boy the grand slam just uh, trivial to remember so this uh, gbu 43 stands for massive ordnance air blast which is 21600 pound and it is a gps guided explosive and this was the first time this is the first time that us has used this mother of all bombs that is the massive ordnance air blast in combat this bomb was developed by albert wimmerts of uh, united states military and was first tested in tested in 2003 after the testing the bomb was manufactured only during the time of iraq war was never used but it was never used and soon russia after uh, that developed the father of all bombs which is thought to be four times as powerful as mother of all bombs okay so father mother game i uh, don't know how it will be asked in upsc but uh, you need to remember it there is also tnt uh, bomb you, they may ask the full form uh, very less chances however the second topic we are going to see is uh, madan mohan malviya malviya so he was uh, awarded uh, posthumously recently the bharat ratna and uh, he was the one who was uh, the founder of the bhu that's the banaras hindu university and he was famous for his witty tactics like uh, he went to the nizam of hyderabad uh, to ask uh, for uh, money for building this university but the nizam refused and threw his shoe at him so what he did was he uh, uh, made an auction of the nizam shoe in the market so it was like abhi izzat pe utar aayi thi nizam ke to nizam himself bought uh, that uh, shoe and uh, that that was how he got the money for the bhu so uh, madan mohan malviya ji was an eminent uh, freedom fighter and an educationist uh he is a uh, work is very much uh, important in the history of uh, indian uh, freedom struggle and uh, madan mohan malviya uh, was an eminent uh, politician too and uh, he was the founder of the asia's largest residential university which is the bhu in 1916 and malviya was the president of the indian national congress twice Uh, in the 1909 and 1918, and he is remembered for his stellar role in the independence movement and in espousal of Hindu nationalism. He was one of the initial leaders of the right-wing Hindu Mahasabha. He was the chairman of Hindustan Times from 1924 to 1946, and his efforts resulted in the launch of its Hindi edition named Hindustan Dainik in 1936. So. this is about that he is credited for popularizing the slogan of satyameva jayate which was later adopted as the national motto uh, he was born on december 25 uh, 1861 and is popularly known as mahanama uh, mahamana and uh, the third topic we are going to discuss is the spurs campaign spurs campaign is basically a, a campaign of uh, leprosy awareness launched by uni- union government on the occasion of anti leprosy day which was observed in uh, the last sunday of january and uh, this is the this day is observed every every year on january 30 in memory of mahatma gandhi who attained martyrdom uh, in 1948 to remember his selfless efforts and care for the people affected in leprosy okay so leprosy is a chronic infectious uh, disease caused by my bacterium lepri and it usually affects the skin and peripheral nerves the mode of transmission is still unknown uh, who figures show that uh, about 
टू लैक पीपल आर अफेक्टेड बाय दिस डिजीज ग्लोबली इन 2015 इंडिया अलोन हैज 1.27 लैक केसेस अकाउंटिंग फॉर 60 परसेंट ऑफ द न्यू केसेस ग्लोबली सो इंडिया इज अमंग द 22 कंट्रीज कंसीडर्ड एज हैविंग अ हाई बर्डन ऑफ लेप्रेसी अलोंग विथ हाई ट्रांसमिशन द अदर हाई बर्डन कंट्रीज आर ब्राजील एंड इंडोनेशिया सो यू नो दे माइट आस्क व्हाट इज फर्स्ट कैंपेन सो इट्स बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू लेप्रेसी and uh, this uh, campaign is uh, trying to promote a decentralized community based demand driven approach from present centralized top down delivery driven approach so it's basically uh, idea is to empower the local communities to take over the responsibilities of sensitizing people and not to stigmatize and discriminate against those affected uh leprosy is uh, also called uh, hansen disease so it's a uh, trivia hansen disease uh, leprosy and uh, this is uh, about leprosy now the fourth topic is uh, hefa that is higher education financing agency so government has molded an idea for uh, creating a higher education financial agency and has approved uh, 1000 crore rupees so the basic idea is that the authorized capital is 2000 crores and government will have 1000 crores contribution and the other 1000 crores will come from the corporate sector uh, with five corporate uh, players with each uh, contributing 200 crores to the uh, hfa uh, and uh, it will for, uh, be a part of the csr funds uh, from psus uh, and corporates to promote research and innovation on a grant basis so it will finance the civil and lab uh, infrastructure projects through a 10 year loan okay so this is jointly promoted by mhrd and identified promoter and as we have discussed is a uh, authorized capital of 2000 crores and a special purpose vehicle will be formed with psu bank or a government owned nbfc and it would leverage the equity to raise us to 20000 Uh, crores for funding infrastructure and development projects of the world class labs in iims iits nits and such other institutions okay uh, it will uh, uh, include the centrally funded higher education institutions uh, who will be eligible to join as members of hfa and uh, for joining this educational institutions must agree to accrue a specific amount from their internal accruals for a period of 10 years to hfa so these are the details about it the fifth topic we are going to discuss is about atex atex is advanced stored artillery gun system uh-huh. so kya hai as the figure shows so it's a artillery gun like the bofors but uh, it is indigenously built and uh, it's a uh, built by drdo and the specifications are it's a 155 mm 52 caliber uh, gun and uh, it has a firing firing range of 40 km and uh, it has advanced features like quick deployability auxiliary power mode high mobility advanced communication system automatic command and control system with night firing capability in the direct mode so it's highly mobile uh, advanced communication technology helps me and it comprises of bridge mechanism barrel muzzle brake and recoil mechanism uh, so these are basically basically the details about it and it has longer range and precision and provides greater fire power uh, and jo uh, nodal laboratory hai drdo ka arde that's armament research and development establishment pune it takes the credit of the design and development of atex so a question might uh, come in prelims like what is atex and uh, atex is basically this so yesterday we had discussed about fastag today we are t- discussing about atex yesterday we discussed about uh, bab bbr ambedkar today we discussed about malviya ji and the sixth topic we are going to discuss is uh, gbs that's the gulen barre syndrome so gulen barre syndrome is uh, an inflammatory disorder of the peripheral nerves and uh, why i am discussing is because of some researches from france have found the evidence that uh, the zika virus is associated with uh, this disorder so the one who are affected by zika virus are detected with having gbs just gulen barre syndrome so it is it's basically uh, related to disorder uh, su jati hai matlab peripheral nerves mein 
तो इट इट हैज कैटेस्ट्रॉफिक कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज टू द ब्रेन एंड द मोटर मूवमेंट एंड द इम्यून सिस्टम ऑफ द बॉडी इज अफेक्टेड एंड द about zika virus you must be knowing that uh, it was uh, basically in the latin america it started outbreak and uh, then uh, it was who declared it as a public health emergency of international concern and uh, what was observed that there was a 20 fold increase in the number of gbs cases during the zika outbreak so the seventh topic i am going to discuss is about alberuni so alberuni was a foreign traveler and uh, he was the guy who came uh, during mehmud ghazni in the 11th century and uh, he was a persian uh, scholar and a polymath so this guy was uh, the one who was the first muslim scholar to study india and its brahmanical tradition he is called as the father of indology indology is study of india and the first anthropologist called one of the earliest and the greatest polymath of uh islamic world so it's like uh, this guy was a uh, uh, very much uh, he uh, had 146 works on astronomy kind of chawa he, he did uh, astrology chronology time measurement geography cartography mathematics mechanics tradition pharmacology james india uh, literature so scholar kind of a man uh, 77 km impact crater in Uh, moon is named after him there's the alberuni crater and he traveled with mehmud ghazni and uh, basically the real patron of his was the uh, son of mehmud ghazni who was masood and uh, his works were in arabic and persian he knew sanskrit and greek and uh, he did not write much about battles and wars he wrote on contemporary culture tradition and custom and uh, his book the cook ma hind uh is also called as indica and is a work related to indian philosophy and religion another indica you must be knowing uh, was written by the greek uh, ambassador megasthenes and uh, so this is uh, his work uh, and uh, other book was kitab al qunan al masudi so its masudi canon is about astronomy geography engineering and is named after masud because this was, he was a great patron of his and uh, it, it is said that he was the first who calculated the height of the mountain by going to two points of at sea level with a known distance apart and then measuring the angle between the plane and the top of the mountain or both for both points okay uh, so this is about uh, alberuni and the eighth topic is quantum dots so you can see king questions on some contemporary everyday science applications and uh, kind of thing so what is quantum dots quantum dots are semiconductor nano crystals they are made up of many small materials same materials as ordinary uh, semiconductors as we see in the figure and it's a combination of transition metals so transition metals are basically metalloids uh, which have properties of both metals and non metals so uh, they, they are called as transition metals so silicon is uh, famous for that and uh, unlike uh, ordinary bulk semiconductors which are generally macroscopic objects quantum dots are extremely small in order of, of the order of nanometers so they are very nearly zero dimensional uh, and uh, what i can see about quantum dots is uh, we have a great future about quantum dots and we saw uh, the lcd screens are uh, having uh, quantum dots and uh, all those color effects and all those uh, filters and white led black lights uh, is a uh, the magic of quantum dots and uh, due to which uh, we get higher peak uh, brightness uh, in our tv and uh, this vision is of the standard dolby vision uh, color accuracy is there uh, quantum dots have applications in photo detectors it has applications in photovoltaics so solar quantum dot ke jo solar cells bante they are considered more efficient and cost e- cost effective when compared to their silicon solar cells counterparts quantum dot solar cells can be produced using simple chemical reactions and can help to save manufacturing cost as a result uh, biological applications may be quantum dots ka f- hai like in cancer uh, observation diagnostic of uh, cellular imagine imaging quantum computing is an- uh, another uh, uh, field like uh, quantum dots are being used in supercomputers 
which are known as quantum computers and uh, these operate and store information using quantum bits or qubits which can exist in two states both on and off simultaneously so we have a great future about quantum dots and hence UPSC might just ask a question on it Bhuvan what is Bhuvan the ninth topic is Bhuvan uh, this is a uh, Indian version of uh, Google Earth so don't mix up with uh, GPS GPS ka Indian version is Navik that is a IR, IRNSS system but uh, as far as Google Earth is concerned uh, uh, Isro's Bhuvan is a local variant and uh, this Bhuvan is unique because uh, of its high a uniform high resolution data, multi sensor, temporal platform IRS series, rich thematic information with the data, ocean services, collaboration sharing, community participation, terrain profile, multilingual, free data download. So, Bhuvan is basically a Sanskrit word of Earth for Earth and it was launched in 2009 to mark the 98th century of Vikram Sarabhai, anniversary of Vikram Sarabhai, and the sites currently maintained by uh, Hyderabad based uh, NRSC that is the National Remote Sensing Center and uh, let me tell you that uh, it is not uh, the standards of uh, Google Earth however it is uh, ours so uh, it uh, includes uh, uh, images from Cartosat 1 and Cartosat 2 and uh, it, it has various uh, details as you can see and uh, it does not allow online mapping services to sensitive locations such as military and nuclear installations. Uh, Bhuvan is one of the projects where high technology will benefit common man, yeah. And uh, in the current economic slowdown, if someone needs to analyze land for a project, the platform could be used at no cost. So that's an application of uh, Bhuvan. The last and the 10th topic we are going to discuss is Supermoon. So what is supermoon? Uh, supermoon is uh, something when the moon is closest to the earth. So la last year in 2016 we had a supermoon and the closest to my means is 3.5 lakh kilometers away from the earth. Uh, and uh, uh, before 2016 we had a supermoon in 1948 and the next supermoon we are going to see is on 25 November 2034. So basically what is supermoon? Supermoon is a perigee full moon. So perigee matlab pass me or apogee matlab tour. So when uh, the moon is uh, very closer to the earth, it's uh, perigee full moon and this coincides with the moon being the closest to the earth on its orbit. So the moon ka jo orbit hai earth ke uh, around wo hai elliptical order. So elliptical order me uh, elliptical andakar. So andakar me uh, dur kar rahega to so it will be uh, apogee and when it will be closer that is the middle of the path then it will be perigee and uh, during this perigee we have 30 percent larger area of the our natural satellite that is the moon and it is 30 percent brighter so as in the figure we see the micro moon and the super moon and uh, what causes the super moon is uh, the elliptical uh, orbit uh, around which the moon uh, revolves around the earth and uh, it does not have that much impact on the earth uh, as far as uh, this is concerned and uh, the moon is inevitably closer to the earth and when it passes one side of the ellipse and the further way as it passes to the other side so and uh, the reason is uh, why uh, super moons are not all the same size it's because uh, the uh, shape of the ellipse that uh, the moon draws around the earth is changing all the time as it is pushed and pulled by other gravitational forces of other uh, stellar bodies. So these were the 10 topics we discussed today. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please like, comment and share the video.